All right, my friends, we are back in Norway. This is our last day of traveling. Jake and Steve and I have seen a lot of details that are common throughout Norway. So in this video, we're gonna kind of wrap up what we've seen with some common details and a couple things that we think are particularly interesting about Norwegian construction. Today's Build Show brought to you by our friends at Sega. Let's get going. Jake, talk to me about a couple details that you're seeing here that we've seen in other places too. Yeah, after a whole week or a week and a half now in Norway, we have uh, common things that we're seeing everywhere, right? Uh, a lot of wood framing, yep. which makes sense. There are a lot of trees here. Yep. Uh, a lot of either fiberglass or mineral wool. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've seen any other insulation. Nothing, no, no spray foam. No foam, no, no sheet foams. And the only uh, rigid foam we've seen is on this job, which yeah. they're using to isolate between floors. This is a multifamily building. They're using that as isolation for sound purposes and also to run that heat up into the building rather than down. Yeah, everything that's a cavity is a bat. We, we've only seen one blown in job and it was a huge municipal job where batting would be cost prohibitive probably. Interesting. Uh, everything that we've seen is also just like this. It's it's a vapor barrier in the middle of the wall or mm -hmm. two thirds of the way through the wall. Two thirds of the way through, yeah. Uh, everything is regular 24 inch on center advanced framing like we would do at home. Yep. Uh, a two by eight wall basically. Yeah, and then just a like two your by house. Two on the inside. Yeah. And so the service cavity is not entirely a service cavity though because you'll see it breaks through uh, that, what is a six mil poly you think? Yeah. So there, it, it seems weird to just be like, this is what we were doing 25 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it works. Yeah. If you're looking for a class one vapor retarder, this is what they yeah. define as a class one vapor right. retarder. So we, just, we have a six mil poly in the middle of the wall and then there's penetrations coming through it, but they're detailing really well. I mean, you can see in the RV uh -huh. that it's detailed with sick rowl. There's, yep. there's, you know, electrical details going through. There's yep. all sorts of stuff penetrating it and they just are really good at detailing the heck out of it. In the Including like this corner, what's what's happening here on this corner? Yeah, so what is the name of this product? Pre Primer, yeah. P-R-I-M-U-R, primer so it looks like. It's like a, a, a tape, but it's not a tape, it's a sealant that comes on a roll from Sega that it works at a lower temp, but you can also get it to stick to concrete. So uh, they call it an uncured adhesive, right? Yeah, or an uncured sealant. Uncured maybe. sealant. Uh, and so basically they've detailed their vapor barrier to the concrete there. It's pretty interesting. We've seen that once before. They mm -hmm. actually did it to the ceiling in here too. Yeah, they did. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just continuity of control layers yeah. the same way we would have to do it in the States. Yep. It's just one of those things where like, now that we've seen it over and over and over again here, it starts to make more sense. When we first saw it, we were like, really? Poly in the yeah. middle of the wall? Yeah. But we're Anchorage, Alaska, you know, when we're talking latitude. That's right. And we have a class one vapor retarder in the wall. We're trying yeah. to stop that mitigation. now. I think we can make the argument that we're using this as a air control layer because mm -hmm. the outside of this wall is just gypsum. Gypsum with, with a really good uh, Sega tape on it, yeah. uh, Fentrum tape. Yeah. But they're also nailing through it in a bunch of places. They are. So there is some possibility of air leakage into that cavity. So then they have a second airtight layer here. Yep. And then ultimately the drywall also will be an airtightness layer. Yep. Uh, and we should note everything that we've seen on the outside. Uh, no matter the cladding is on a huge, big, wide open rain screen. Like right. most of the time there's four inches of rain screen yeah. on the outside. Yeah. You couldn't ask for better drying potential right. to the outside. Uh, and then all the other details on the inside are the same that we would see in the States too. We have, you know, fire rated walls, we have structural mm -hmm. steel, we have concrete. All the steel is wrapped in, in rock wool or mineral wool so yep. that we're not worried about it melting in a fire. Like all the construction details are very similar to yeah. the States. They're just, 10% different. Yeah. Like just yeah, enough that right. you go, huh, why are they doing well, that? That's a sort little different. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And uh, I do want to mention this service cavity. So two by eight wall insulation, fiberglass, service cavity, two inches roughly. Also, this is going to get fiberglass on it, unfaced. Yeah. And then they hang the gypsum right on top of that. Yeah. And then mud and tape, just like the Just States. like normal. Yeah. Let's go see if we can find Steve, see what he's found. Steve, 
Steve, what are you finding that's common on this building from other Norwegian job sites? Well, they're using the triple glazed windows, mm -hmm. but here they have a little bit of a twist, right? We have the large fixed unit, but notice they actually do a wooden oak tilt turn panel, huh. which is just basically a direct replacement for a glass panel there, but it offers kind of more of a furniture setting, if you will, to the window, which That's I thought was really interesting. Yeah. And the white oak is absolutely gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. And they've used all Sega tapes to tape them in. Yep. And just like other European countries, there's no sill pan under here. No. Uh, they make a really good watertight window and they tape it fully on the outside with Sega Fentrum. So this is a barrier method installation. Yes, right, definitely, total face barrier. And you know, they don't, it's all finger jointed wood, so they're not wasting it. They're using up mm -hmm. all of their wood product. And it has an aluminum face on the outside, so it matches exactly yeah. color coded to the window. So that's one of the cool things. The other cool thing that I found is, you know, back in the States, I do a, a lot of radiant floor systems. We use warm board there. And a lot of times we'll do electric um, so this is an electric radiant floor system in here. It's not a heat mat like we would typically use mm -hmm. in the States. It's basically just a looped wire through there. And it's really interesting because we're going to look at the other radiant system, which is a liquid system, but this is electric. And I think the reason they do it, my theory anyways, it's a bathroom. So if you can imagine, if you're dealing with comfort, the minute I step out of a 95 degree shower onto a floor, I immediately feel cold. Yes. So rather than have to raise the whole house radiant floor heat up, they can kind of super inject heat mm -hmm. in the bathroom. Just where they need it. Just where you need it. So you step out, that's where you're most susceptible to comfort, right? I step out of that water stream, I'm freezing. Yeah, that makes sense. And so I can boost the heat in there, but then when you come over here, they have their standard loop system here where they put it on the surface and then I'm assuming they just pour a lightweight jib crete. They totally have a like. little bit of bond break here. And you can see over here, they have it cut out where they don't have it, where mm -hmm. they have some cabinetry and such uh, carved out of it. But uh, different system, but same result. Fascinating. And I've never seen this before. This is a uh, basically like a... EPS foam type yeah. uh, material they put in two layers down. In fact, I peeled it up here just to kind of verify it was right. So this must come in a four by eight type sheet. Looks like it's three quarters inch thick. There's another three quarter layer down below. And then this is that bond break material. Right. And then I think that this um, dotting gridding is literally just for the uh, plumber to understand. To, to get the quick layout yeah. of understanding, hey, how many times they can count how many squares and get yep. a linear footage and stuff. And then the, the hooks are just basically like little plastic fish hooks. Yeah, they so just kind of jump in. They into pop that. in and, you know, they kind of self uh, stick themselves Hold that in, place. in the foam. So very cool. That's pretty neat. Let's go see what other details we can find. Steve, this is a common detail that I've seen all over the place, which I think is really interesting. Talk to me about what we're seeing. Yeah, so that's probably a steel structural column that's embedded when they're doing the rough frame, concrete frame. You can see there's a little weld plate that mm -hmm. gets embedded in the concrete. They put that column in there and then they basically insulate it and cover it on all four sides and then wrap the wall around it. So that's just a rigid rock wool. It looks like it's maybe three quarter inch thick yep. and they've got a metal pin uh, or a, I should say a, a metal nail. Yeah, that they just shot in. That they shoot right in on a cap fastener. Yeah. Pretty interesting. They've done that everywhere, but they're smart about bringing that steel closer in on the building so it's not catching the cold. There's probably at least, uh, kind of hard to tell, but it looks like there's at least two or three inches of fiberglass behind that as well. Yeah. So now their sequencing and their understanding of how to put buildings together is uh, very well done. Yeah. It's interesting how similar the details are across Norway. Yeah. It's almost as if, and you and I said this earlier, it's almost as if there's a handbook <coughs> for here's how a building needs, needs to go together. Yeah. And everyone's following that across Norway, even though we've been to multiple towns. Yeah, their, their, their spectrum of construction assembly is, is very narrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been to large trade schools, 15-story apartment buildings, seven-unit apartment and single-family house. 
and from the inside, they all look the same. Yeah, very similar details. All right, Steve, last detail that I've seen, very common roofing. Talk to me about what they do here. Yeah, it's all this torched down asphalt membrane that, I don't know, it comes in, I believe it's about a one meter roll, but the guy on the other side was just basically folding it over the parapet and then just heating it with a propane torch. Yeah, and then they'll put their rain screen on and they'll call it good. Yeah. Fascinating that they don't put anything on top of the gypsum either. There's no, you know, I would think that they would want an additional weather water barrier to make sure that gypsum doesn't get wet over time. You know, we've had about a week to think about it. One of the things I think is a really good reprieve. You know, in, in America, we talk about, well, three quarters is really good, but you want to do at least three eighths. You can do a quarter inch or eighth inch. They drain water. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a building here that didn't have a rain screen system that was less than about four inches. Yeah. So it's Plenty basically, it's, it's totally air open. So, and you know, that's vapor open, so it can just dry so quick. Yeah, that's a great point that it dries so fast that even gypsum, which you think of as a product that's less uh, or more prone to moisture problems yeah. can do fine as long as it's got a, a good drying channel in there. Yeah, and it just, it has a hyper drive rain screen system to it, so it's never a problem. And almost everything on the outside has two layers of rain screen, some vertical, some horizontal. They love this black inky wood. Yeah. Uh, we've seen a lot of wood claddings here, even though this climate, how many inches of rain did they say they get here? 89 inches. It's twice Seattle where we're standing. Wow. We're in Bergen right now. 89 inches of rain annually. That's crazy. And yet a wood exterior, as long as it can dry, does pretty well here. And it's also very serviceable because everything is screwed on the outside that I've seen. Yeah. And we, we haven't seen it yet, but talking to the owner developer here, all of these flat roofs are going to be their typical green roof system. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. So they'll put those potting... Uh... Those pods on there with the dimple mat, it'll drain. You can see the drain pipes here behind uh -huh. me that connect. But in talking with him about it, it's basically to slow the rain to wastewater. Mm -hmm. Right? So it, it, it captures through. a lot of that. It captures a lot of it and allows it to maybe dry back into the atmosphere. Fascinating. So. Super fun traveling around. Big thanks to our friends at Sega for taking us out. Yeah. If you're not familiar with Steve's videos, go check out Steve. He's the only architect I've ever seen who actually shows you his details. And it's going to be fun to get back home and see what uh, Steve <laughs> maybe thinks about now after this go. trip to Norway. So go check out Steve and Jake's videos on the Build Show Network. And of course, go follow them on Instagram as well. I'll put a link to both of those things in the description below. But if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.